The lagoon, we consider it to be our breadbasket. As a protected area, it is linked to our coral reefs, it's linked to our beaches, it's linked to our seafood, it's linked to the wetlands, it's our food security, it's our direction in terms of ecotourism and sustainability, and you are targeting all that to change it into a multi-million dollar real estate scheme which does not benefit us in any way. De meeste Caribische eilanden zien er zo uit. Hotels, toeristen, helikopters van de allerrijkste, drukke wegen en cruiseschepen. Veel cruiseschepen. Maar één eiland is anders. Barbuda. Voor ons, als Barbudans, is het waarschijnlijk de beste plek op Gods Earth. Het is heaven. Barbuda is such a beautiful place. White sandy beaches, turquoise sea, lush greenery, sunshine most of the time. So who wouldn't want to come here? <laughs> the pink sand, it's really beautiful. The water is really relaxing. Like the food we eat as well. Yes. I'm a fisherman. Um, that boat is mine. That, that is my lobster boat, right? And this island, 62 square mile, I know every inch of it, really. We are blessed. There's a lot of deer here, which are the fallow deer. We hunt them in a sustainable way. We never overhunt, right. you know, so it's just for food within the local populace. And of course, there's the fishing, and, uh, and then there's the conchs and the lobster, which right. are staples of our diet. Yeah. That's your daily menu. That's our yeah. daily menu. Right, amazing. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but what makes it unique is the fact that it's a sister island of Antigua and Barbuda. Very small population, just about um, 1,800 at the last census. It's flat, extremely flat. So a third of the island is wetland, that's mangrove wetland. Another third is basically just above sea level and we have a neighborhood called the Highlands and high being just around what, 40 meters. On a whole, Barbuda has been preserved in a particular way where there are natural systems that are still intact compared to the other Caribbean islands, the marine areas, the wildlife, the type of resources, fish, lobster and that sort of thing is as close to natural as you can get it anywhere else. And that's because of the way Barbudans have li been living. Die manier van samenleven is wat Barbuda zo uniek maakt. Nadat Groot-Brittannië de slavernij afschafte in 1834, werd dit eiland gemeenschappelijk grondgebied. De bewoners zijn samen eigenaar van de grond en beslissen samen wat ermee kan gebeuren. Linne Algoed is researcher aan de Vrije Universiteit Brussel en doet sinds 2017 onderzoek naar de kracht van gemeenschappelijk landgebruik. We grew up hearing about land and how our relationship with the land is different from a lot of other places. Historically, the Codringtons, who were the landowning family here, they had slaves. And when the Codringtons left, we learned, we were told that they left the land to the Barbudans. Privégrondbezit bestaat er dus niet. You know, several families have their grounds and so they can literally live from the vegetables and, right. the, and the fruit that they can grow on these grounds. Gulliver Johnson is jager en activist. Hij strijdt om het behoud van het landsysteem. Samen met hem brengen we een bezoek aan enkele lokale boeren. This is the thing about here. The sweetest melon, the sweetest pumpkin, I, I taste from this, from mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, my parents yeah. farm. They're past that now, you know. Yeah, yeah that's what they've, they've been doing all their life. Fishing and, and they have the ground like we're doing now. We have been do, um, cultivating this for a while now. I saw these out just a while ago. And we were roasting some corn, so we're, we're just about getting ready to go home now. 
we came up to pick some peas and so we have some 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 squash and some peas, beans like these. Over on the other side, yeah. We live from the land. We farm, we hunt, we um, you know, we go fishing, we do everything, we build our home. And so it is something that from generation to generation we have been taught um, this is how to keep the land system. This is how you would benefit from it. And it has worked for us for generations. And so the Barbu, the Land Act was brought in in 2007 to formalize that communal land system where it stated that all land in Barbuda is owned in common by the people of Barbuda and land shall not be sold, period. Er is op Barbuda één dorp, Codrington. Daar woont zowat iedereen. Andere delen van het eiland zijn onaangetast of worden gebruikt voor landbouw om te jagen of te verzamelen. Maar hoe werkt dat gemeenschappelijk grondbezit nu precies? When a person or a Barbudan wants a piece of land to build a home or to do a business, they'll apply to the council. The council will survey the land and that land will be issued to that person. All right, so they'll have a right of occupation. Elke inwoner kan bij de lokale overheid drie stukken grond aanvragen. Eén om er te wonen, één voor landbouw en één om er een zaak te starten. We do lunch and we do um, grill, uh, we do seafood, we do lobster, uh, fish, grill fish. In the evening we do jerk pork, jerk chicken. All our seafood is from here. The lobster, the conch, the, the, the fish, everything here is from Barbuda. Okay, so the song you want? It gives you the, the opportunity um, to, to bail, free of cost. Because uh, as we know around the world, you'll have to pay for a piece of land, thousands of dollars. Here in Barbuda, um, we don't have to do that. Um, the Land Act states that you can get a, um, a piece of land to do business. And as you see, I'm, I'm doing my shop. Um, it's a great, great opportunity where the Land Act comes in. Maar dit systeem van landgebruik staat sinds enkele jaren onder zware druk. De prachtige stranden, de rust en de ongerepte natuur zijn ook opgevallen bij internationale projectontwikkelaars. The most recent project is um, Peace, Love and Happiness. Peace, Love and Happiness. Zo heten de financierders die Discovery Land Company, een Amerikaanse projectontwikkelaar, betalen voor de bouw van de Barbuda Ocean Club. PLH, zoals de locals het project noemen, wordt volgens hun website een privéparadijs met een groot aantal vakantievilla's, een golfterrein, beachclub en een helipad op Coco Point en Palmetto Point. Er zijn zelfs plannen voor de bouw van een jachthaven in de Lagune. People might think PLH is tourism, but it isn't. It's not tourism. The bulk of what's going on there is for ownership. And the long-term goal, I believe, is the Prime Minister wants the, the Land Act to be completely abolished and freehold be brought in so those people who have a property on a piece of land can say, I want my land certificate. I have been asked as the Prime Minister of the country to share my views with you. Dit is Gaston Brown, een ex-bankier uit Antigua, die sinds 2014 premier is van Antigua en Barbuda. Onder zijn bewind werden leases voor enkele grootschalige internationale projecten goedgekeurd. Naast het PLH-project kon ook Nobu Hospitality, deels eigendom van acteur Robert De Niro, een Nobu-restaurant bouwen op een van de stranden. Het lokale bestuur van Barbuda vreest dat zo het beheer over haar land en haar kustlijn verloren gaat. The first thing that they intend to do is in order to set their project down, they need to sell real estate. Each property is valued at a minimum of three, four million US dollars for each property. Some properties have been sold as high as 30 million US dollars. They intend to come to Barbuda, get land at peppercorn, peppercorn prices, and the way the leases were issued is all heaped up in con controversy and conflict of interest and that sort of thing. So they managed to, in, as far as we Barbudans are concerned, they have stolen that land. 
2018, the government changed. Um, Mr. Brown repealed that land act. In other words, it took it off of the books. Het PLH-project werd goedgekeurd in een dorpsraad, maar volgens de locals en de lokale overheid werd het project niet volledig voorgesteld en waren de ecologische gevolgen ervan toen niet duidelijk. This is about people wanting to own part of Barbuda. Simply, simply that. And on the way to owning, the government or whoever is making money out of it. But not the Barbudans, not the council. The finances do not reach Barbuda and the law is, that is entrenched in the constitution, is that monies, taxes, anything paid by anyone on Barbuda must come to the Barbuda Treasury and that's not so. The money goes to the central government. We recognise that our way of life is being threatened. For you to have a development like peace, love and happiness, it's a real estate type of development where you're going to be selling properties, you're going to be selling land. Once you start a system like that, land values are going to go up and what Barbudans have enjoyed over centuries in terms of having full access to resources because land represents resources, it represents power. You're now going to be placed in a market where he who have the most money which are the billionaires, they will outcompete the ordinary Barbudans. And then you're going to begin to see the disparities that you're seeing in many parts of the world where poor persons do not have access to any resources, housing, or anything like that. Poverty will set in. Uh, we've seen what, ha what has happened around the Caribbean, around the world with lands, and um, we just cannot allow for our lands to just be taken from us and be alienated to everybody else. And our grandparents and our generations before sacrificed a lot to ensure that we have this opportunity to live a particular way. Um, there was a poverty assessment that was done as part of national development and Barbuda was found to have no poverty compared to Antigua just across the water. We don't have vagrants, we don't have people eating out of garbage bins and that sort of thing. Secure population and that is a result of the land tenure system where land is not sold where everyone has access to clean, fresh air, food, the agriculture that we practice, and you're seeing all that ripped out. Well, they're saying we don't own the land. I don't agree with any of that, because our people have been here for all, for hundreds of years, so how, 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 we, how are we not going to have any claim to, to this? That doesn't sound right. This is us. This is what we have. This is what we have to show from, from, from slavery. In any means necessary, we're going to fight to maintain um, ownership of this land. Doesn't matter what the government of Antigua says or what Privy Council says, this is our land. In september 2017 werd Barbuda geraakt door orkaan Irma. In de nasleep van de orkaan verplichtte de regering alle inwoners het eiland te verlaten. Um, Hurricane Irma came. We believe that the government used that opportunity to immediately come and change the system. We had a similar hurricane in, in 1995. The difference between 1995 and 2017. In 2017, all Barbudans were taken off the island. The excuse was that for our protection and another storm which was coming, the thing is the storm never came. I refused to move and so shortly after that I saw a bunch of military guys coming down through the bushes. I said to them, I'm not moving because as far as I'm concerned I'm fit here and in fact I'm now having breakfast. Do you want some breakfast? And I gave him some breakfast just to demonstrate to him that look I am functional. Why are you moving people off of the island? One night while I was sitting here, you keep hearing these, you know, metal grating against solid rock. I'm saying, wait, what's going on in Barbuda? So one day I decided to take a trip up to the forest area. 
I was basically shocked to see bulldozers and masses of cloud forest just cleared, root down. Now the thing that burnt us as Barbudans, there was no electricity on the island at the time, no hospital, no, the school was still closed and kept closed. And we were being told, you are building an international airport when you have people in a disaster situation. And it's one of the things that made us realize that what was happening was by design. The recovery was being delayed, obstacles were being placed in our way. As an academic person, I knew about disaster capitalism, but that was the first time, blunt in my face, the experience of disaster capitalism. Alle bouwactiviteiten op het eiland vergroten de vraag naar grondstoffen. Vlak bij de nieuwe luchthaven, te midden van de bossen, ligt er nu deze opgravingsplaats. You have to have permission from the council to remove anything from Barbuda. Whether it's um, materials like this, whether it's artifacts you find, pink sand on the beach, you have to get council permission and that wasn't given for this. What is being destroyed essentially is ecosystems. So the underground water supply is very important to us, the hydrology. When you see the extent to which this excavation goes, it goes down literally to the water table. What that does is exposes the entire underground water system to contamination and other things that are unpredictable. We eventually took legal action against the government because what we're saying is that you have started this and it does not follow the regulations and the clauses in our own physical planning act which should control these things. So we're saying the government is acting legally. The thing is, you know, the, the huge amount of money this re represents? That we've lost. And yeah. we get nothing. Yeah, we've lost. This airport, it's not for the people, it's for the rich. And it's an enticement for people to come and say, I want to build a holiday home here because they're going to have an airport. And that might not necessarily be so. John and Jackie have twijfels bij de haalbaarheid van de bouw van de luchthaven. Volgens hen is het niet eens de bedoeling dat die ooit zal openen. What this project is all about, attract those persons to buy million dollar homes. And so in the long run, they're trying to paint a picture that you can land your private jet in Barbuda, be ferried to your private home, and then we are excluded by these 10 foot fence with barbed wire. It's not for us. Okay? So it's an entire community operated by itself, independent and keeping us up. Essentially, in one word, apartheid. Een tweede stuk grond waar PLH bouwt is Palmetto Point. Dit maakt deel uit van het Codrington Lagoon National Park, een gebied dat wordt beschermd vanwege zijn unieke duinen en moerasgebied. Het is een cruciaal ecosysteem en een broedplaats voor kreeft, vissen en vogels. Codrington Lagoon is een nursery for your marine life. It is also nature operated. Simply means we don't have to do nothing about it. It operates on its own. As you look around, you're going to see a lot of jet black bird flying around. That same jet black bird can inflate a red balloon during mating season. Those are adult male. All the male do is sit in the mangrove and put on a show. And uh, if no female look at him, he, I believe he feels bad every day when, he, when the sun goes down. <laughs> Take a look at that water. This is, this is where the lobster and the fish and the wildlife, the birds, this is where it starts. Oh my God, okay? beautiful. Okay. So that um, stuff you're seeing is an upside, upside down jellyfish. There are not many areas throughout the Caribbean, even in Antigua, where you can actually see the bird bottom like this. This represents productivity. Okay? So that tasty lobster, this is what makes it. This is our food security.
So Barbuda having that high proportion of areas like that, seagrass, coral reefs, wetland, mangrove, those are ideal areas for lobsters to settle out. And when that egg hatch now, that little creature you now to stay in here until they become big and strong enough, then they go back out on the ocean floor. Those ocean currents carry them throughout the region on the Atlantic and the Caribbean Sea. The lobster which was hatched in Barbuda may actually settle out in Belize and it may settle out in Florida. So we have something to really smile about. If you, for example, build a golf course that's going to be destroying the wetlands, that's going to affect the lagoon and those conditions inside there, you're going to be affecting the production cycle for lobster. So they build all these houses in areas where they can view the sea and play golf. And what do you do in order to build that? You destroy the very thing which is attractive to us as Barbudans and to the world as well. In een brief uit 2021, gericht aan de eigenaars van PLH, benadrukken speciale rapporteurs van de VN nog eens dat Palmetto Point in een beschermd gebied gelegen is. Ze drukken hun diepe bezorgdheid uit over de impact van het project op de ruimere omgeving en de lokale bevolking en wijzen op het fragile ecosysteem van Palmetto Point. The, as we say, the wild, wild west. That period of time in human history when anybody did anything as they feel like, we have advanced way beyond that. I've been taking a series of images for um, the last year or so, just to um, log the happenings of the larger projects on the island, to make a, a kind of record of what's happening to our ecological systems. The pictures tell the story and we are seeing the wanton mass destruction of very important ecosystems and wetlands which have protected us for hundreds and hundreds of years. Mangrove wetlands are some of the most important and most efficient carbon sinks. Codrington Lagoon is ook een beschermde Ramsar site. De internationale Ramsar-conventie beschermt watergebieden over de hele wereld. Zulke gebieden worden beschouwd als een belangrijk onderdeel in de bescherming tegen de klimaatopwarming. Dit zijn beelden van Gaston Brown tijdens een VN-vergadering. Hij vraagt er compensatie voor de gevolgen van de klimaatcrisis. De burden valt meestal op de poor in small developing nations, zoals as mijn. For years we have had the solution and actually practicing it. And when you're now hearing of a development policy which is going to be taking out things like this and then you're going to be um, lobbying uh, in these climate meetings for loss and damage mm -hmm. how can you justify that when you are taking out the insurance policies that you have and the things that allow us to be able to withstand the climate change this is what protects us exactly. and that, that's and why it's world. so important to us yeah. and the world exactly. okay we need more of these wetland areas Barbuda oh, is the only country in the world where you, you have um, lobsters for snacks. You, you can actually eat lobster anytime. Well, I source from the fishermen, yeah. and then the hunters will come by with a, a quarter. I use the back portion. So I basically try to do all local meats. So you'll find I do a deer burger, I do a lobster burger. I also do a deer conch lobster taco. I try to utilize what we have. Coral trout, mutton snapper, chavalier. What are you fish today? Silk snapper. Fishing is a mainstay of the Barbudan community. Most Barbudans who are not full-time fishers subsidize their income through fishing. A lot of the young people, that's where they start, in the lagoon right here. I think that would happen with any development that's really as large as we're having. It will affect us in one way or the other, because they're going to overfish, you know, things that, um, that would happen to the habitat anyway, and then some of them are pulling down the mangroves. So, you're going to find something is going to, something is going to give. 
and maybe I won't be able to access the amount of lobster that I access. Oh. You can't pull out that? You're not ready yet. Oh, you're not ready yet? No. About oh, five minutes, ten minutes? Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes, they'll be finished. Just, just... So, um, you do what you have to do now. So I live in the present at the moment when it comes to food. Dip it in that, take that up. Take it out. Take okay, this let out. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take that piece. This. Eat it now. Oh, you, you put it in the juice? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's how you eat a piece of lobster. <laughs> no butter and lime. <laughs> Spoils the taste. Too much garlic don't good for lobster unless you're cooking it on the stove. Oh my God. Ain't it good? I told you. This is how I love it. <laughs> that is just incredible. So Barbadians were known to just roam the beaches freely. And if you lose that, especially when you look at what is happening from Cocoa Point all the way down to Palmetto Point, that area is basically inaccessible to Barbadians. That is frightening. I am the kind of person that loves to go pick bush and any kind of fruits around and, and that kind of thing. You can't go there anymore. So my way of life, my customs, my culture, it's been totally eroded and destroyed. And the government have to understand the importance. You cannot just take away what is the norm, what is the culture, what is the traditions of the people, just like that. I want Barbuda to develop at a pace with an increase in population over time that doesn't have Barbuda to be a place where Barbudans don't exist. I tell my kids, when I speak to my kids and my grandkids that are old enough to understand, there's nobody in the world as rich as you are. I said, look at it, we, 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 we own this, we own paradise. People pay for this, we have it free. So that makes us wealthy beyond your imagination. My grandkids and my great grandkids would be angry with me. I mean, I'm not a rich man. I'm not going to be able to leave my kids no large inheritance, but I can leave them a piece of this. Hey, can't be any better than that.